Hello students, this video is about uh, the introduction of uh, strategic case study planning. And in this video, we'll discuss that uh, how to approach SEMA strategic case study exam. So first of all, this uh, strategic cases study exam is based on a pre-seen material. You will be provided a pre-seen material on which you have to apply, apply your a strategic level uh, stuff and then you have to answer some unseen questions so in order to uh, in order to work for this type of exam there are four things you need to work on first of all you have to cover all the important areas of your course in a strategic level that is the key technical areas there are three uh, uh, papers that is uh, P3 risk management, F3 financial strategy, and the third one is the strategic management. And first of all, you have to focus on revising your key areas. For example, if you're coming through the exemption route, then you need to focus on these three subjects first and then identify that what are the key areas for example, in financial strategy, one of the key area is currency risk management. So you need to focus on what are the currency risks, how to mitigate those risks, what are the hedging strategies available. Similarly, in P3 risk management, one of the area is corporate governance. So you need to focus on what is the corporate governance, what committees are there, what is the role of CEO, what is the role of the executive directors, how a board is to be constructed, what is a balanced board and different issues. Similarly, in E3 strategic management, you need to assess the business models. For example, the PESTEL model, you have to assess the external environment, the Porter's five forces model, uh, the SWOT analysis and other key models. So it's very important to have a good understanding of your syllabus without having good understanding of syllabus, it's very difficult to uh, applied knowledge on your pre scene. Next thing is you have to practice the past papers and how you can do that. You have to identify uh, the past variants. You have to see their questions and then you have to apply your knowledge on that question. Remember that one pre scene is used for two exam diet. For example, the pre scene is to be issued for November and Feb. This is common for these two exams. There are six variants available pertaining to one pre scene. It means you have six papers to practice and each variant consists of three tasks. That means in a single paper, there are three tasks and each task include multitasking. For example, section one cons uh, consists of two tasks, section two consists of three tasks, section three consists of three tasks. So in this way, if you practice one complete case analysis with their past paper, so you have six variants available. And in that six variants, you have uh, 18 uh, sections. And under that 18 sections, you have approximately 36 plus subtasks. So while attempting one past variant, you can have different aspects of the syllabus covered in this section. And you have to write by yourself so that you can practice that how to write in the exam. Next thing you have to focus on is the current case analysis. For example, if you are planning to sit in FAB 2022, so you have to identify the current case. What you have to do, you have to understand the industry, you have to understand the companies, the functions of the companies, you have to apply business model in your current case, such as pastel, sort analysis, Porter's five forces model, et cetera, et cetera. You have to analyze their financial strength. You have to analyze their risk. Majority of the things are given in the pre seen material. So you have to analyze these things line by line so that you can have an understanding of what is the business, what is the direction, what are the risks, what are the issues. And then after doing all these three stuffs, then at the end, you have to apply, you have to practice a few mock exam on your current case. So this is, this is an ideal strategy through which you can pass this paper. 
but that requires a lot of time. So those who are coming from the exemption background, at least they have to take four to five months for this uh, practice, for this uh, preparation. Now, as far as the key areas of the syllabus is concerned, I have written a few key areas from each syllabus portion. One is P3 risk management. There are issues related to key risk, risk register, the corporate governance, the internal audit issues, the internal controls, the cyber security risk issues you have to focus in, on your exam. As far as the financial strategy is concerned, the implication of a change in share price, the currency risk issues, the objectives of the uh, organization, business valuation techniques, merger and acquisition implication, suitability of a particular dividend policy, and in strategic management, you have to deal with some ethical issues, the strategic objectives, the business models, the suitability, adoptability, and feasibility evaluation of the strategy, key stakeholder analysis, change management. These are the few important areas you have to look for. Now, you will get this kind of uh, the exam paper uh, when you open a uh, past variant. For example, there are three sections, one, two, and three. Time for each section is 60 minutes and number of answer screens, number of subtasks. So you can see first section includes two subtasks, second includes two, third one includes three. And accordingly, the marks have been given in order to have an idea that how much to write. So for one section one, there are two tasks. First one is 60%. That means you have to allocate 60 minutes accordingly to this percentage. And in the last, you have three tasks. So you have to use your 60 minutes in order to apply it on A, B, and C. So time management is very crucial. Now, there are a few examples of the past variant question in each task. So you can see one of the example I have taken from uh, the E3 portion, that is identify and explain the interest of key stakeholders. Obviously, you will be given a scenario that is the reference material. You have to study that reference material along with the knowledge of the pre-seen material. This reference material is the unseen stuff that will be given to you on the day of the exam. So in this information, you have to apply this particular topic that is identify key stakeholders and explain the interest of their key stakeholders. And this is 60% task. Similarly, one of the question is recommend test that the company's internal audit department might use to check that staff are complying with those controls. So this is related with the internal audit portion of P3. Similarly, one of the example I've taken from the F3 portion, identify the challenges associated with evaluating the currency risk associated with continuing to trade with the company and explain their significance. So you can see, the questions are not straightforward from your uh, topics. You have to apply these topics into the pre-seen and unseen material. So a good understanding of the topic is must in order to apply it correctly. Now, as far as the marking scheme is concerned, uh, I have shared one of the marking scheme extract. For example, there was a question that says that explain the implication of fall in our share price for the board and the company itself the share price is stabilized at 25% less than it was before the news of the accident was released. But bear in mind, the news was only published a few days ago. So this is the F3 portion, uh, implication about share price change. It's, it might be like you have to discuss about the efficient market hypothesis. Now you can see the marking scheme is saying that uh, for uh, the board, uh, there are three levels of marks. Uh, level one includes one to three marks. Uh, and if no rewardable material, then there is zero marks. Level one includes identify the implication of a fall in share price for the board, one to three marks, provide an explanation. You can get four to six marks, provide a comprehensive explanation. You can get maximum seven to nine marks. And similarly, uh, the other things that you have to provide the funding related issues, no rewardable marks, zero, identify the implication of fall in share price for future funding up to two marks, explanation, three to five marks. And if your answer is a comprehensive one, considering uh, best answer that you can get maximum eight marks. 
So from the question, you can see it again. The question was explaining the implication of fall in share price for the board and the company itself. So there are two aspects of this question and you have to identify, then you have to explain. So in order to pass this paper, uh, you need a mix of a strategy. You need all technical stuff. You need to have a good understanding of the pre-seen material. You need to practice the past variants so you will get an idea how questions have been examined in past on these areas.